on Tuesday, April the 20th, 1999, at Columbine High School in Columbine, an unincorporated area of Jefferson County, Colorado, United States, in the Denver metropolitan area. Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, who were both scheduled to graduate from high school that May or June, and uh, apparently both of them had applied to college, at least Dylan had on purpose shot and killed 12 fellow students and one teacher, uh, David Sanders, who uh, was teaching computer and business courses and also was acting or serving as a sports coach before committing suicide jointly. The main narrative we know, it remains unclear whether there was a wider conspiracy to commit these homicides, which were classified as murders, because it was clear that the two boys had for months been planning these attacks, and actually over one year earlier, in uh, either late 1997 or in January 1998, Eric Harris had posted on his website a threat to kill as many people as possible, including Brooks Brown, a boy who was attending the same high school uh, and who had been in some conflicts with Harris. However, they had reconciled uh, before the shootings, and indeed Brooks Brown was one of the people, one of the students whom Eric Harris spared. Harris, uh, who usually was so punk punctual about attending school and especially about writing tests, had not shown up at school that morning and had missed one test. Uh, and when Brooks Brown met him on the school's parking lot since he had gone out uh, to smoke a cigarette. Uh, he asked uh, Harris what was the matter with him and had reminded him of the missed test. Harris had mockingly laughed at him uh, and said, it doesn't matter anymore. Then he said to Brooks Brown, Brooks, I like you now. Get out of here. Go home. Brown left the high school's lot, and he did survive the shooting. Uh, controversies have arisen as to the lack of rapid response and more courageous response by the police officers. There was one police officer on the parking lot, and he did uh, exchange gunfire with either Eric or Dylan or both, but then he ran out of ammunition and he had to uh, get more ammunition. One of the school's teachers, a part-time visual arts teacher named Patty Nielsen, did phone uh, 911 and uh, she then ran to the school's library where there were tens of students and uh, told them that there were students with guns in the hallway and told them all to hide under the tables. And she was able to hide from the shooters uh, under a desk. And so uh, there was a live telephone line connection between the emergency services and the Columbine High School's library uh, during the main action of the shooting, which occurred in the library. The two boys had prepared numerous bombs, and then shortly after entering the high school, or their high school, because they were officially still its students, uh, they set them in the cafeteria, known as the Commons, the cafeteria uh, which uh, David Sanders, before his uh, tragic shooting by one of the killers occurred, had managed to evacuate. And the bombs were set to explode at a time 
when they're probably, according to Eric Harris's calculations, would be hundreds of students in the cafeteria, and therefore there would be a maximum number of casualties. However, the bombs did not explode, which must have been a disappointment, especially to Eric Harris. The two boys, perpetrators, families naturally avoided publicity, but finally in 2016, the mother of Dylan Klebold, Sue Klebold, decided to break her silence um, and wrote a sad memoir of her son and especially of that terrible day on which her son participated in the killing of so many fellow students and of one teacher. Uh, the memoir is entitled A Mother's Reckoning. Since then she has given some or several interviews, some of which are actually available uh, here on YouTube. And uh, those of you who are interested in this topic can view them. In the early reports of the shooting, which even I can remember, because I <clears throat> followed the world's events um, avidly and usually on a daily basis as I continue to do today, over 19 years later. For example, about the existence of the so-called trench coat mafia because Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold did sometimes wear trench coats. Um, then there were stories according to which uh, they adored the Nazis, including the late dictator of Nazi Germany, Adolf Hitler, and that they had on purpose chosen Hitler's 110th birthday, uh, or what would have been Hitler's 110th birthday as the day of the shootings, uh, that they even had learned enough German in order to bully or annoy uh, their fellow students and that they had dabbled in occultism and or satanism. It is true that they mocked in some of their, in at least one of the basement tapes, Rachel Scott, a deeply committed 17 year old Christian girl who had been in one course, apparently an English course, where the students were to hand in video assignments and uh, she had made clear that she couldn't approve of their violent and sick videos. Um, she herself made happy videos with cool music. It was strange, however, that only the previous year, uh, when she had uh, at a school event performed a mime dance, Watch the Lamb, and halfway through her performance, the tape had jammed because of some technical disorder. Um, then Dylan Klebold had actually fixed the tape so that uh, Rachel was able to complete her performance. It was strange that just one year later Dylan uh, was involved in the massacre whose first documented victim was Rachel. Um, it is true that they both had a problem with anger, both had a problem with negative suicidal thoughts uh, and at least Dylan struggled not just with suicidal thoughts but also with bouts of depression or mood swings as his mother Sue has documented later. Uh, Eric Harris reportedly had tried to enlist in the US Army but had been considered mentally unfit because of his anger problem or anger management problem or then his depression. He was on some kind of medication but apparently had discontinued it before the shootings. Um, both of them at the same time expressed a mocking for various fellow human beings and uh, like uh, an exaggerated admiration for themselves. On the other hand, they also wanted to die, which made their 
life philosophy rather nihilistic and contradictory. Yes, there have been copycat killing, killings uh, in the subsequent history of school shootings in North America. Um, the Virginia Tech massacre in 2007, perpetrated by a South Korean immigrant. Um, also was very brutal. It happened almost exactly eight uh, years after the Columbine High School shooting on April the 16th, 2007. Yeah, Sung Hui Cho, an undergraduate student at the university, shot 49 people on campus with two semi-automatic pistols, killing 32 and wounding 17, so it was an even deadlier shooting. On the other hand, of course, there were, since it was a university, not a high school, um, or like a combined polytechnic institute and state university, there were many more potential victims than at Columbine High School. And then the Florida school shooting uh, during this year, 2018. Yes, the Stolman Douglas High School shooting that happened on February the 14th, 2018. The gunman was arrested. Nine, uh, he was 19-year-old former student Nicholas Cruz. And uh, he managed to kill 17 people and and uh, non-fatally injure 17 other people. And in my distant native land, Finland in Northern Europe, two school shootings occurred within less than one year of each other. Uh, on November the 7th, 2007, uh, a third year senior high school student, Mr. Pekka Erik Alvinen, shot dead uh, seven fellow students, the school nurse, and even uh, the school principal, before then turning his gun on himself. And he also admired neo-Nazis and basically despised many other human beings and apparently expressed an admiration also for Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold. And then in late September 2008, um, uh, this uh, November 2007 shooting occurred in the rural town of Tuusula to the north of Helsinki, but still in the Helsinki metropolitan region, while the September 2008 shooting by Matti Saari, Mr. Matti Saari, a hospitality or restaurant uh, student, um, occurred in the little city of Kauhajoki in southern Ostrobothnia, western Finland. Uh, he killed nine fellow students and one teacher before shooting himself fatally. But let's get back to Columbine. Yeah, 99 explosives were found in the school. They also had four knives which they did not use. 24 people were non-fatally injured as a result of uh, this massacre. Uh, the personal journals of the perpetrators documented, uh, documented that they wished their actions to rival the Oklahoma City bombing in April 1995 and other deadly incidents in the United States in the 1990s. The massacre, as always happens, sparked debate over gun control laws, high school cliques, subcultures, and bullying. It was alleged that Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold had been bullied during their years 
in high school, although it appears that they themselves bullied students, especially um, Eric Harris. So it could well have been a case of give and take, that they had been bullied and they themselves had bullied students. Eric Harris complained uh, in his diary shortly before the shootings uh, that one of the reasons he wanted to kill many fellow students was that he had been left out of so many social events of the uh, fellow students. And then social outcasts, although the perpetrators were not outcasts, they did have a number of friends and acquaintances, including Brooks Brown. The use of pharmaceutical antidepressants by teenagers, because Eric Harris was using one, or had been using one before the shooting. The teenage internet use, because they uh, had that violent video game Doom, uh, who's... Um, playing they apparently had mastered very well. And then violence in video games. One of the positive results of the shootings has been in uh, high schools and other places of education throughout the United States and probably also in many uh, communities of Canada and at least in some communities outside North America an increasing emphasis uh, on youth evangelism by various churches, whether evangelical, Pentecostal, charismatic, interdenominational, or non-denominational ones. Uh, indeed, at least three, possibly four, of the victims who were shot to death were committed Christians. Two of them, interestingly, have received a massive, a massive amount of publicity while the other two, one or two, uh, have rarely or fairly rarely been mentioned in the media in the nearly uh, two decades since the shootings. You guessed fair names. Cassie Bernal and Rachel Scott, they have uh, received by far much more uh, popularity, much more attention in the media in the years that have passed since this tragic shooting than John Tomlin, who also was a deeply committed Christian, and then Isaiah Scholes, who may have been a committed Christian, at least he, according to one newspaper or magazine report, probably magazine report, had been attending a Christian youth group. Isaiah Scholes, interestingly and tragically, uh, was taunted for being an African-American in his final moments alive, before he was shot dead. Yeah, John Tomlin's uh, commitment to the Bible, to the church, and the fact that he even had driven before his uh, tragic death to Mexico in order to help build a house for a family, they have been relatively rarely mentioned while most of the Christian interest in this uh, tragic high school shooting has focused on Cassie Bernal and Rachel Scott uh, because of the powerful testimonies that they had. Cassie Bernal had dabbled for some years in the occult, even at some point having symbolically given her soul to Satan through one of her friends before she had been powerfully converted. Um, to Christianity in early March 1997 during a Christian week and retreat for the youth. And then uh, Rachel Scott had already at the age of 11 in 1993 decided to give her life to Jesus. And by 1998 she had lost many, if not most, of her friends as a result of her deepening Christian faith. Well, she did have one vice, smoking, which she then uh, di did quit before her murder. And almost exactly uh, one year prior to the shootings on May the 2nd, 1998, this comes from the video uh, recorded um, informal sermon or speech by 
her father, who incidentally used to serve as a pastor before she before he divorced Rachel's mother, Beth Nimmo, although the two remained on cordial terms. Uh, anyway, on May the 2nd, 1998, uh, Rachel wrote in her personal diary, This will be my last. Dear Lord, I have got forgotten everything that I need or everything that I can. Thank you. So Rachel actually did expect to die young. And uh, she had one, was it so that she had one dream where tears came from her eyes and they watered a flower. And indeed, her biography has been entitled Rachel's Tears. And then one of the truly positive outcomes of this tragic high school shooting has been Rachel's Challenge, a program uh, whereby uh, high school students especially commit themselves to being kind to one another, uh, to uh, contacting people who, well, especially fellow students who seem sad and withdrawn, depressed, and they commit themselves to fighting bullying. And while it is not explicitly a Christian program, apparently a number of Christian conversions have occurred at least indirectly through that program. And especially in the first months and years following this tragic incident, it seems that uh, throughout especially the United States and to a smaller extent elsewhere, the number of teenagers and young adults uh, committing their lives to Jesus increased. Unfortunately, the culture of death is still rampant um, and there are many teenagers and uh, young adults as well as, of course, older people, tragically also a significant number of, number of children who speak or write or make videos about suicide, um, who talk about suicide, who behave suicidally, whether by overeating, over drinking, smoking much, uh, using drugs a lot, or uh, driving ve vehicles of various kinds um, too quickly. So let's still go through this uh, shooting. So on that morning, Tuesday morning, April the 20th, 1999, Harrison Klebold had placed a small firebomb in a field about three miles or 4.8 kilometers south of Columbine High School and two miles or 3.2 kilometers south of the fire station. Uh, set to explode at 11.14 a.m., the bomb was intended as a diversion to draw firefighters and emergency personnel away from the school. It partly detonated and it caused a small fire, which, however, the fire department quickly extinguished. At 11.10 a.m., Harris and Klebold arrived separate at Columbine High School. Harris parked his car in the junior student parking lot by the south entrance, even though he was a senior student. And Klebold parked in the adjoining senior student parking lot by the west entrance. The school cafeteria, which was their primary bomb target, with its long outside window wall and ground level doors was between their parking spots. So after they parked their cards, each containing concealed car bombs timed to, de to detonate at 12 noon, the duo met near Harris's car and armed a further two 20, two 20 pounds or 9.1 kilogram propane bombs before entering the cafeteria a few minutes before the beginning of the first or a lunch shift. Then they placed the duffel bags containing the <clears throat> bombs set to explode at approximately 11.17 a.m. inside the cafeteria 
Then they returned to their cars to wait for the explosion and shoot survivors that, or who would flee the building. If these bombs had exploded with full power, either all or at least most of the 488 students in the cafeteria would have been killed. The survivors would have been severely wounded. Uh, possibly the ceiling would have collapsed, which would have dropped part of the library into the cafeteria. There was one police officer, a Jefferson County Sheriff's deputy, Neil Gardner, and this department actually was criticized for not acting on Harris's violent threats posted online. The report had been received by a police officer, but it had been somehow, for some unexplainable reason, uh, not acted on or had been misplaced. One possible reason was that after having stolen um, some stereo equipment from a parked car in January or February 1998 and having been quickly caught, Eric and Dylan had attended uh, youth coaching character building lessons and Eric had further attended an anger management course and uh, according to the police officers supervising them they had both performed excellently however Eric had ridiculed the police officers in his private journal and had, had essentially confessed that he had pretended uh, to have changed his ways yeah, and he uh, claimed that he had every right to stole, steal that equipment uh, because the United States is the land of the free and if some uh, stupid fellow uh, left uh, that equipment unguarded in the back of his van uh, it was no crime, no bad uh, action to steal them. Natural selection. So this is one of the <clears throat> many examples how the evolutionary theory can be misused by criminals. Not that the evolutionary theory by itself would automatically lead to any criminal acts, but it can be abused that way. <clears throat> anyway, Officer Gardner usually ate lunch with students at the cafeteria, but on that day he was eating lunch in his patrol car at the northwest corner of the campus watching students in the smokers pit in Clement Park. The security staff at Columbine unfortunately did not observe the bombs being placed in the cafeteria because a custodian was replacing the school security videotape as it happened. The bags holding the bombs were the first visible were first visible on the fresh security tape, but they were not identified as suspicious items. And no witness recalled seeing the duffel bags being added to the four hundred or so backpacks already in the cafeteria. And then Harris encountered Brooks Brown and told him to leave. Uh, several minutes later, students departing Columbine for their lunch break observed Brown heading down South Pier Street away from the school. Then Harris and Klebold armed themselves by their cars and waited for the bombs to explode. But they did not explode. They walked towards uh, the school around 11 or shortly before 11, 19 a.m. They climbed to the top of the outdoor west entrance steps, placing them on a level with the athletic fields west of the building and the library inside the west entrance directly above the cafeteria. And from this vantage point, the cafeteria's west entrance was located at the bottom of the staircase next to the senior parking lot. And at 11.19 a.m. the deadly shooting spree began. Rachel Scott was killed by shots to the head, torso and leg alongside the west entrance of the school. Uh, she was eating lunch uh, on the grass uh, beside the west entrance of the school with her friend Richard Castaldo who did survive, although he was severely wounded having been shot in the arm, chest, back and abdomen. Uh, Castaldo later said he saw one of the boys throw a pipe bomb which only partly detonated. He first thought that the bomb was only a crude senior prank, so he didn't take it seriously. 
At that moment, a witness held Eric Harris. Eric Harris yelled, go, go. And then the two gunmen pulled their guns from beneath their fr trench coats and began shooting at Castaldo and Scott. Uh, there were reports, yeah, Castaldo had testified that, uh, reported that Eric Harris had uh, asked Rachel Scott if she believed in God. Uh, and was it so that without even giving her the chance to reply, uh, he had shot her dead. However, later reports have contradicted this. Also, uh, the reports according to which uh, Cassie Bruno, another very famous Christian victim of the shooting, uh, would have been asked by Eric Harris if she believed in God, that was in the library, and then uh, Eric Harris, while pressing the um, and Eric Harrison then pressed uh, his gun on Rachel, I'm sorry, Cassie's temple, and then after a break, Cassie had replied, yes. Uh, and then Eric had shot her. According to one of the survivors, Emily Wyant, uh, Cassie did pray silently. Uh, after having asked my my god or dear god dear god why is this happening i just want to go home and uh, according to emily wyant cassie actually uh, had been praying silently she had not said anything uh, to eric harris and eric harris had either said or shouted peekaboo and then shot her Valine Schnur, another girl who was there in the library who first had been hit and then uh, had pleaded God to keep her alive, had been asked by Dylan Klebold if she believed in God. She had replied yes. Dylan had asked her why. Valine had replied because she believed in God and her parents had taught her to believe in God. And Dylan had asked why without waiting for the answer. He had then gone away. Uh, Cassie's parents, including especially her mother, uh, Misty Berno, firmly believed or have believed, maybe even believed to this day, I'm not sure, that uh, Cassie indeed had said yes, and indeed Cassie's um, biography written by Misty Berno is entitled she said yes, the unlikely martyrdom of Cassie Bernal. Okay. After having killed Scott and uh, having seriously uh, wounded Castaldo, Harris removed his trench coat and aimed his 9mm carbine down the west staircase toward three youths, 15-year-olds Daniel Rorbo, and Sean Graves and 16-year-old Lance Kirkland. Uh, they were friends and had been ascending the staircase directly below the shooters. Kirkland, who survived the shooting, later reported seeing Klebold and Harris standing at the top of the staircase before the pair opened fire. Um, Graves did survive while Rorbo tragically was killed. Inside the school, some students still believed that they were bearing witness to a senior prank by the two seniors. But in the cafeteria, David Sanders um, quickly realized it was not a prank, but a deliberate attack on the school. Harris and Klebo then turned and started to shoot west in the direction of five students sitting on the grassy hillside uh, beside the steps and opposite the west entrance of the school. Fifteen-year-old Michael Johnson was hit in the face, leg and arm, but ran and escaped. 16-year-old Mark Taylor was shot in the chest, arms and leg and fell to the ground where he pretended to be dead. The other three escaped uninjured. Klebold walked down the steps toward the cafeteria. He then mockingly replied to Kirkland, who was weakly calling for help. Sure, I'll help you. And then shot Kirkland in the face, critically wounding him. 
but apparently did not they either did not want to kill him or thought that he would die anyway of his wounds or just wanted to shoot more victims or maybe even did not want to kill him i'm not sure uh, Daniel Rohrbo and Sean Graves had descended the staircase uh, when Klebold and Harris's attention was diverted by the students on the grass. Graves, who ha had been paralyzed beneath the waist, had crawled into the doorway of the cafeteria's west entrance and collapsed. And then Klebold shot Rohrbo at close range and then stepped over the injured Sean Graves to enter the cafeteria. Um, Just a moment. Then officials speculated that Klebold went to the cafeteria to check if the propane bombs were about to explode. Harry shot down the steps at several students sitting near the cafeteria's entrance, severely wounding and partially paralyzing 17-year-old Anne-Marie Hochhalter, who remains confined to a wheelchair until now. Klebold then exited the cafeteria and went back up the stairs to join Harris. They shot towards students standing close to a soccer field, but did not hit, hit anyone. Then they walked toward the west entrance, throwing pipe bombs only very few of which detonated. Then Patty Nielsen had noticed the commotion and walked toward the west entrance with a 17-year-old student, Brian Anderson. She had intended to walk outside to tell the stu two students to stop their prank, thinking need that they were not serious, but were just playing games. As Anderson opened the first set of double doors harris and klebold shot out the windows injuring him with flying glass and hitting nielsen in the shoulder with shrapnel nielsen ran back down the hall into the library and then alerted the students inside to the danger and told them to get under desks and keep silent and then she made the famous phone call to 911 hiding under the library's administrative counter Anderson remained behind, caught between the exterior and interior doors. At 11.22 a.m., the custodian called Deputy Neil Gardner, the assigned resource officer to Columbine on the school radio, requesting assistance in the senior parking lot. The only paved route took him around the school to the east and south on Pierce Street, where at 11.23 he heard on his police radio that a female was down and assumed she had been struck by a car. While exiting his patrol car in the senior lot at 11.24, he heard another call on the school radio, Neil, there's a shooter in the school. Harris at the west entrance immediately turned and fired 10 shots from his carbine at Gardner, who was 60 yards away. As Harris reloaded his carbine, Gardner leaned over the top of his car and fired four rounds at Harris from his service pistol. Uh, Harris uh, had been able to uh, get down behind the building. Gardner mistakenly believed that he had hit Harris. Then Harris re-emerged and fired at least four more rounds at Gardner, which missed before retreating to the, into the building. No one was hit during this exchange of gunfire. Uh, Gardner was what, not wearing his prescription eyeglasses and was unable to hit the shooters. Thus, five minutes after the shooting started and two minutes after the first radio call, Gardner had engaged in a gunfight with one of the student shooters. Uh, there were already two students dead and ten wounded. He reported on his police radio, Shots in the building, I need someone in the south lot with me. The gunfight distracted uh, Harris and Klebold from the injured Brian Anderson, who escaped to the library and hid inside an open staff break room. Back in the school, the duo moved along the main north hallway, throwing pipe bombs and shooting at anyone they encountered. Klebold shot Stephanie Munson in the ankle. She was able to walk out of the school. Uh, the pair then shot out the windows to the east entrance of the school. Then uh, they proceeded through the hall several times, 
They unsuccessfully shot toward any students they saw. And then they went toward the west entrance and turned into the library hallway. Deputy Paul Smoker, a motorcycle patrolman for the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office, was writing a traffic, t- traffic ticket north of the school when the female down call came in at 11.23. Taking the shortest route, he drove his motorcycle over the grass between the athletic, athletic fields and headed toward the west entrance, and then he saw Deputy Scott Taborski following him in a patrol car, abandoned his motorcycle uh, for the safety of the car. The two deputies had begun to rescue two wounded students near the ball, ho- ball fields when another gunfight broke out at 11.26 as Harris returned to the double doors and again began shooting at Deputy Gardner who returned fire. From the hilltop, Deputy Smoker uh, fired three rounds from his pistol at Harris who again retreated into the building and even then no one was hit. Um, and by that time teacher Dave Sanders had successfully evacuated, evacuated students from the cafeteria uh, and then Harris and Klebold were inside the main hallway. Sanders and another student were down at the end of the hallway still trying to re- secure as much of the school as they could and then they encountered Harris and Klebold. They turned and ran in the opposite direction. Uh, Harris and Klebold shot at them both. Uh, Harris hit Sanders twice in the chest but missed the student. The student ran into a science classroom and warned everyone to hide. Klebold walked over toward Sanders, who had collapsed to look for the student, but returned to Harris up the north hallway. Sanders struggled toward the science area, and a teacher took him into a classroom uh, where 30 students were located. They placed a sign in the window, one bleeding to death, in order to alert police and medical personnel of Sanders' location. Uh, Fortunately, he had studied first aid, or otherwise come to know it, and student Aaron Hansi was brought to the classroom from another by teachers despite the unfolding commotion. With the help of a fellow student, Kevin Starkey, and teacher Teresa Miller, Hansi administered first aid to Sanders for three hours, attempting to stem the blood loss using shirts from students in the room. Using a phone in the room, Miller and several students maintained contact with police outside the school, and all the students in that room were evacuated safely. The library massacre took about seven minutes from 11.29 to 11.36 a.m. And uh, first uh, Harris yelled, get up! Uh, Then both Harris and Klebold shouted, all jocks stand up, we'll get the guys in white hats. Wearing a white baseball cap at Columbine was a tradition among sports team members, typically jocks. No one stood up. Harris said, fine, I'll start shooting anyway. He uh, wounded Evan Todd, who was hiding under the under a desk. He was hit by wood splinters, but only slightly injured. Then he killed a special education student, Kyle Velasquez who was sitting at the north row of computers. He had curled up under the computer table. Um, They also shot Patrick Ireland in the head and foot, Daniel Stapleton in the thigh, Mackay Hall in the knee. They shot and killed Stephen Kernow, who was uh, fatally wounded in the neck. Uh, They shot Casey Rugseger in the shoulder, hand and neck. They killed Cassie Bernal by a shotgun wound to the the head. They killed Isaiah Scholes by a shot to the chest. They killed Matthew Kechter or Kechter by a shot to the chest. Uh, They wounded Lisa Kreutz in the shoulder, hand, arms and thigh. Uh, they wounded Valine Schnur with wounds to the chest, arms, and abdomen. They wounded Mark Kintgen in the head and shoulder. They killed Lauren Townsend 
or towns and um, by multiple gunshots uh, to the head, chest and lower body. Uh, they wounded Nicole Nolan in the abdomen. They killed John Tomlin by multiple shots to the head and neck. They killed Kelly Fleming by a shotgun wound to the back. They wounded Gianna Park in the knee, shoulder and foot. They killed Daniel Mauser by a single shot to the face. They wounded Jennifer Doyle uh, in the hand, leg and shoulder. They wounded Austin Eubanks in the hand and knee. And finally they killed Corey DePouter by shots to the chest and neck. Um, interestingly, John Savage, an acquaintance of Klebold, asked Klebold what they were doing. Oh, just killing people, Klebold answered casually or even mockingly. Savage asked if they were going to kill him, possibly because of a fire alarm. Klebold said, What? Savage asked again. Klebold hesitated, then told Savage to leave. So he decided to spare Savage's life. And it seemed that he was not as murderous, not, uh, not quite as intent on killing other students as Eric Harris was. Savage was able to flee immediately, escaping through the library's main entrance. The two walked out of the library at 11.36 a.m. Cautiously fearing the shooters return, 34 uninjured and 10 injured survivors started to evacuate the library through the north door, which led to the sidewalk adjacent to the west entrance. Casey Rubseger was evacuated from the library by Craig Scott. Had she not been evacuated at this point, Rubseger would likely have bled to death from her injuries. Patrick Ireland unconscious and Lisa Kreutz, unable to move, remained in the building. Patty Nielsen joined Brian Anderson and the three library staff in the exterior break room into which Klebold had earlier fired shots. They locked themselves in and remained there until they were freed at approximately 3.30 p.m. Um, after leaving the library, Harris and Klebold entered the science area where they threw a small firebomb into an empty storage closet. It caused a fire. However, a teacher hidden in an adjacent room was able to extinguish it. Then they proceeded down the south hallway where they shot into an empty science room. At approximately 11.44 a.m., Harris and Klebold were captured on the school security cameras as they re-entered the cafeteria. Harris then knelt on the landing and fired a single shot toward one of the propane bombs he and Klebold had earlier left in the cafeteria, but he was unable to detonate it. He then drank a little liquid as Klebold approached the propane bomb and examined it. He lit a Molotov cocktail and threw it at the propane bomb. As the two left the cafeteria, the Molotov cocktail exploded, partially detonating one of the propane bombs at 11.46 a.m. Two minutes later, approximately one gallon of fuel ignited in the same vicinity, causing a fire that the fire sprinklers then extinguished. After leaving the cafeteria, the duo returned to the main north and south hallways of the school, shooting aimlessly. On several occasions, the pair looked through the windows of classroom doors, making eye contact with students hidden inside, but neither shooter tried to enter any of the rooms. They even reloaded their firearms close by the room where Dave Sanders was bleeding to death. After leaving the main office, Harris and Klebold walked toward a bathroom where they taunted students hidden inside, making such comments as, We know you are in there! And let's kill anyone we find in here. But neither attempted, despite their boastful threats, to enter the bathroom. At 11.55 a.m. they returned to the cafeteria, where they briefly entered the school kitchen. Then they returned up the staircase and into the south hallway at 11.58 a.m. At 12.02 p.m. they re-entered the library. 
which was empty of surviving students except for the unconscious Patrick Ireland and the injured Lisa Kreutz. Once inside, they shot through the west windows at police who returned fire. No individual was injured in this exchange. At approximately 12.08 p.m., 32 minutes after they had first left the library, they jointly committed suicide. Um, an article by the Rocky Mountain News stated that Patty Nielsen overheard Harris and Klebold suddenly shout, One, two, three! in unison just before a loud boom. Nielsen, however, has later stated that uh, she had never spoken with either of the writers of the article. Uh, Harris fired his shotgun through the roof of his mouth. Klebold shot himself in the left temple with his TEC-9 semi-automatic handgun. By noon, SWAT teams were stationed outside the school and ambulances started taking the wounded to local hospitals. Meanwhile, families of students and staff were asked to gather at nearby Leewood Elementary School to await information. A call for additional ammunition for police officers in case of a shootout came at 12.20 uh, p.m. And the killers had committed suicide 12 minutes earlier. Authorities reported pipe bombs by 1 p.m. and two SWAT teams entered the school at last at 1.09 p.m., moving from classroom to classroom discovering hidden students and faculty. By 3 p.m., Dave Sanders had unfortunately bled to death and died of his injuries before SWAT officers could take him to medical care. He was the only teacher to die in the shooting. Officials found the bodies in the library by 3.30 p.m. By 4 p.m., the sheriff made an initial estimate of 25 dead students and teachers. At 4.30 p.m., the school was declared safe. At 5.30 p.m., additional officers were called in as more explosives were found in the parking lot and on the roof. By 6.15 p.m., officials had at last found a bomb <clears throat> in Klebold's car in the parking lot, and the sheriff decided to mark the entire school as a crime scene. Thirteen of the dead, including the shooters, were still inside the school <clears throat> at the time. At 10.40 p.m., a member of the bomb squad accidentally lit a striking match attached to the bomb, an undetonated pipe bomb, by brushing it against the wall of the ordnance disposal <clears throat> trailer. The bomb detonated inside the trailer, but no one was injured. The perpetrators fired a total of 188 rounds of ammunition, 67 of them by Klebold, 121 of them by Harris. Law enforcement officers fired a total of 141 rounds during exchanges of gunfire with the shooters. At 2.30 p.m., a press conference was held by the Jefferson County District Attorney David Thomas and Sheriff John Stone, at which they said that they suspected others had helped plan the shooting. Uh, they had not formally yet identified the dead, but families of the children thought to have been killed had been notified. Um, it wasn't until Thursday morning that uh, Brad and Misty Berno finally were told by a police officer uh, through a telephone call that their daughter Cassie had been killed. The FBI concluded that Harris was a clinical psychopath and Klebold was depressive. Dr. Dwayne uh, Fusilier, the supervisor in charge of the Columbine investigation, later remarked, I believe Eric went to the school to kill and didn't care if he died, while Dylan wanted to die and didn't care if others died as well. Harris had clearly been the a shooting's mastermind, having a messianic level superiority complex and had hoped to demonstrate in his dying moments his superiority to the world. Klebold had repeatedly documented his desires to commit suicide in his diary and had primarily participated in the massacre to end his life. Um, indeed, in the surviving uh, basement tapes, in the last one, 
uh, taped roughly 30 minutes before <clears throat> the attack. Dylan's last messages or last sentences were the same, and were the following, uh, with some modifications. I want to leave out for the sake of decency the expletives. Dylan, hey mom, gotta go. It's about a half an hour before our little judgment day. I just wanted to apologize to you guys uh, for anything this might instigate as far as or something. Just know I'm going to a better place. I didn't like life too much and I know I'll be happy wherever I go. So I'm gone. Goodbye, Reb. We did what we had to do. And then Morris and Nate, apparently two of their friends, uh, could have also Dylan's personal possessions. Goodbye. Uh, Eric then said simply, Yeah, everyone I love, I'm really sorry about all this. I know my mom and dad will be just shocked beyond belief. I'm sorry, all right, I can't help it. Morris, Nate, if you guys leave, I want you guys to have whatever you want from my room and the computer room. Susan, sorry. Under different circumstances, it would have been a lot different. I want you to have that fly CD. That's it, sorry. Goodbye. Um, okay, some of the victims or several of the victims are found um, on the columbine.wikia.com uh, website. Let's see if I'm able to open the articles. Okay, Kyle Velasquez. Hmm. Probably because he was a special needs student, he did not know how to hide. He had attended Columbine for three months before the shooting. A neighbor said at his funeral that Kyle was a boy of simple sincerity and genuine heart and he was always smiling uh, as a baby he had suffered a stroke that left him mentally disabled and he also had severe asthma due to his disabilities Carl's parents had prepared to spend the rest of their lives with him uh, let's see Just those be brief by him. Okay, Cory de Pooter. He was 17 at the time of his murder. He was one of the 56 students and staff at Columbine High School Library during the shooting where most of the action took place. He was hiding under a desk from where he was studying where he, when he was shot three times by Dylan Klebold in the neck, chest and left arm with a TEC-9. His injuries killed him and he was, according to the ColumbineWikia.com website, uh, the attack's last victim. He had been a wrestler, he loved to hike, golf, hunt and fish. Uh, fishing was his passion. He had recently taken a maintenance job at a golf club to save uh, money to buy a fishing boat with a friend. He was described as an all-American boy who put schoolwork above everything else. His funeral was held at Trinity Christian Center.
then Yeah, Kelly Fleming, if I remember correctly, from the Time magazine or another magazine covering the shooting, uh, she was creative. She wrote poems and uh, had started to, or had learned to play uh, the guitar. Okay, I was able to open this article. She was 16 year old. At 16 years old at, old at the time of her murder. Although a creative girl, she was also shy. She loved Halloween and was an aspiring songwriter and author who had written many poems and short stories based on her life experiences. She had been writing an autobiography on her home computer. Um, she had often gone to Columbus Columbine's library to write, and her stories often had happy endings. Um, then let's try to quick open Isaiah Scholz's article. Uh, Isaiah was studying in the library with his friends Matthew Kester and Craig Scott when the shooters entered the room. The three boys hid under the same table listening to the sounds of the gunmen destroying the library and shooting other people. Um, Isaiah Dunn died from a gunshot wound to the chest. He wanted to be a comedian dreamed of becoming a music executive and uh, wanted to attend an arts college. Friends nicknamed him Bushwick. Born with a heart defect, he was a fighter who overcame his disability and went on to play football and wrestle. Um, he had been uh, in the previous year on the football team, but his father claimed he quit possibly because of racial insults. He was a popular student at Columbine. Okay. Then Daniel Mauser. Was 15 years old. Um, he excelled in math and science and got straight A's on his last report card. He wasn't afraid of challenges according to his father and uh, he wasn't ashamed to hug his parents. Although he was shy he didn't let that stop him from joining the debate team and though he wasn't a natural athlete he still joined the cross-country team. He liked to ski and camp, and shortly before his murder, he had returned from a two-week trip to Paris with the French club. He had won the Stretch for Excellence Award for being named the top biology student of the sophomore class at Columbine High School. He was described by his family as having been a shy, gentle, lovable, and loving boy. He liked pepperoni pizza, playing video and computer games, and watching shows like The Symptoms and The X-Files. He was fond of trivia and knowledge games, as well as swimming and hiking. His father had hoped that in the upcoming summer of 1999, uh, he could take Daniel on his first uh, 14,000 mountain hike. He volunteered at the Swedish hospital and was preparing for confirmation in the Catholic Church. Uh, his father, Daniel, I'm sorry, Tom Mauser, is a gun control advocate. 
and is concerned with gun safety in America. Just two weeks before he was killed, Daniel had asked his father if he knew that there were loopholes in the Brady Bill which the US Congress had passed in 1993 and which had outlawed, for example, semi-automatic weapons. Of course, we know, those of us who are realistic about the human nature, that there always will be, as long as uh, God allows this course of the world con to continue, as long as the Millennial Kingdom is not here, there always will be wicked people who will uh, go to great lengths to break even the most stringent and the best meaning laws. But at least we can, in my opinion, to some extent, reduce these shootings by having reasonable gun control. On top of that, of course, we need powerful Christian evangelism and revival. Then Daniel Rohrbohl, if I'm able to click his biography open. <clears throat> At the time of his murder, he was 15 years old. He was a close friend of uh, students Lance Kirkland and Sean Graves, who both survived the shooting. Uh, the three had a common hobby and vice, smoking, and often hung out at Smoker's Pit in Clement Park until Dan's fateful day. He enjoyed electronics and computer games, and was looking forward to getting his driver's permit soon. He was remembered as a funny boy. He helped in his father's stereo business every day after school, and during the summer he worked on his grandfather's farm harvesting wheat, as he had done since he was three years old. Um, um, his funeral was held at Grace Presbyterian Church, and he was buried in the Littleton Cemetery in Littleton, Colorado. And the next ones, um, Lauren Townsend, she was 18 years old um, and was studying at the library on the day of the massacre. Um, her friends Lisa Kreutz, Diwata Perez, Valine Schnur, and Gianna Park all survived the shooting, by the way. She hid beneath the table with them when the teacher, meaning Patty Nielsen, told everyone to get down. Um, she was a senior and captain of the girls' varsity volleyball team, which her mother, Dawn Anna, coached. She was a member of the National Honor Society and was a candidate for valedictorian of her graduating class. She was a straight A student. She volunteered at a local animal shelter and had planned to major in biology at Colorado State University after graduating from Columbine. And then after that, Steve Kerno, who at 14 was the youngest victim. Um, he dreamed of being a Navy top gun pilot and was very close to his mom Susan and father Bob. He loved soccer and worked part-time as a referee and his father Bob coached the soccer team where he played, nicknamed, uh, named Blue Devils of the Colorado Rush. He liked the color green because it was the color of the field. His favorite subjects were Spanish, technology, and gym because he liked to play sports. He loved Star Wars, and his favorite character was Han Solo. Um, science fiction fans nationwide put together a go to Star Wars Memorial Day in his honor when Star Wars won The Phantom Menace premiered in theaters on May the 19th, 19. 99. He had been anxiously waiting it for its release. 
then coming towards the end of this video David or Dave Sanders was a computer and business teacher at Columbine High School for 25 years and who coached the girls basketball and softball teams uh, according to his students he wasn't just a teacher but also a friend a mentor and an inspiration he and two of the school's janitors helped to get over 100 students out of the path of danger by herding them away from the students um, saving an untold number of of lives that day and by the time the gunman finally arrived to the cafeteria it was nearly empty thanks to him sadly he was wounded uh, by the shooters and he bled to death before the SWAT teams could take him to a hospital then Um, John Tomlin was a 16 year old Christian student at Columbine High School um, He had been born in Wisconsin, so Upper Midwest. He had worked after school at a local nursery hall in trees, and he belonged to a church youth group where he had met his girlfriend of seven months, Michelle Otter, or Otter, or Otter. Family and friends remember his energy and the warmth of his smile. He loved church and Chevrolet trucks. Uh, he had once driven all the way to Mexico to help build a house for a poor family. Um, he enjoyed also lifting weights. Um, he had left his uh, Bible on the dashboard of his car in the hope that someone would see something there that would bring them closer to God. According to his father, John Michael Tomlin, he was a perfect son, just good. You'd ask him to wash a car and he'd wash both cars. And then his funeral was held at Foothills Bible Church, where he had uh, gone frequently, or which he had attended f frequently. And then... Matthew Kester. who was at the time of his murder 16 years old. He was studying at the library with his friends Isaiah Scholes, who also was killed, and Craig Scott, who survived. Craig Scott, as you probably know, was Ray and is Rachel Scott's brother. He was a 210-pound sophomore. He played on both the offensive and defensive lines of the football team, and he is remembered for his ready laughter. He was a weightlifter and an A student, always getting good grades at school. Um, he was always in the library studying. He always put academics first and he had straight A's, but he would never brag about his academic success. And according to his friend Greg Barnes, whom I'm quoting, whose marks I'm quoting, he was never in a bad mood. He was consistently happy. Tragically, Greg committed suicide shortly after the first anniversary of the uh, Columbine shooting, so probably in late, either late April or early May 2000. His parents wrote in a statement uh, that was read at his funeral at St. Francis Cabrini Catholic Church one week after the shootings um, on April the 27th, 1999. He was a wonderful role model for his little brother, their brotherhood had just recently developed into a bonding friendship. In Matt's heart, he was always in, there was always enough room for everyone to be victorious. Um, 
the University of Columbine, which Matt had planned to attend after Columbine, the University of Colorado, sorry, which Matt had planned to attend after Columbine, sent his younger brother Adam one of the jerseys bearing Matt's name and the jersey number he wore 70 as part of Columbine's football team. Well, anyway, uh, sorry for this long and rambling video, but the good thing is that God can bring good things out of even such a tragic um, shootings. One of the uninjured victims, uh, I think Crystal Woodman Miller, uh, decided on the day when she survived this massacre to dedicate her life to Jesus Christ. And uh, several years ago I watched <coughs> one or two videos featuring her. She is now a popular Christian writer and motivational speaker. And uh, he, she's ministering to God's kingdom that way and is encouraging people, of course, regardless of their age, to put their trust in God through Jesus Christ and to follow him. Bye-bye and God bless all of you.